Hi there, welcome at Behind the Lens. I'm Paul and today we're going to talk a bit more about the Crane M2 and why I've decided to return it. Yes, it's frustrating, but I really have to return it. But before I do, questions came in to this time and really people keep them coming because I really like it because it also allows me to kind of test uh, a bit more than my own kind of observation. So I can really work with that. Uh, the first one came from uh, Inko fellow Dutchman, uh, who basically asked, can I uh, shoot via a travel router? So can I control the Crane M2 via a travel router, including my camera? Well, the short answer is no. I really went uh, to research on it on, online. There's no mention of it. Then I went back to Zeon themselves, like explained it. They didn't understand, but said, no, not supported anyway. So I went back again. And they really came out like, look, you're the only one who really um, uh, is asking us this. So why are you asking? You're the only one. We're not going to follow this up also. So the, uh, for you, Ingo, if you want to buy the Crane M2, you have a choice to make there. If you really like your shooting via a travel router, don't, don't take the risk because you might have to return it. Uh, so, sorry. The second question is from Za Zaur. Zaur. Yeah, uh, sorry if, if I mispronounce your name. Uh, he's asking something which is a good question, I think. Can I uh, shoot with my G7 uh, or can I balance with my G7 with the 25 millimeter lens, which I happen to have in the 1432? I could be wrong there, but those lenses, in principle, I know for sure because I'm, I've mounted the uh, Crane M2 with my heaviest lens for the Panasonic thing, which is the 1260 uh, kit lens. And yes, it balances. Unlike uh, the Lumix uh, DMC LX100, which uh, is a heavy camera body with an even heavier lens, the vertical axis will tilt like this and the motor cam in pan mode has trouble getting, getting it up. Yeah, sorry for language. Uh, the same is on a previous question I had from Pampo Kovnik for the DCFZ80 uh, or 82, depending on where you are. No, it doesn't balance. So if you have those cameras on it, and I happen to own both of them, no. When it comes to the G7, yes. But now this comes to the third and final part of this episode is why did I make the choice, the frustrating choice, to actually, to actually return the Crane M2? Yeah, because what is good about the Crane M2 is it is a very light gimbal, it's very compact, it's easy to control, it's easy to connect to. You can easily connect it to your Xeon app. It's a lot easier than with, for instance, the VBL lab, which I'm discovering. You can connect your camera easily yeah, and it's great. The only problem with the app there is that once you connect your camera and you're shooting a bit longer, you will see that your screen, even if it's flipped out, will go dark at a certain stage. And then you're really flying in the dark because the app doesn't have any kind of connectivity. So you need to have your image app from Panasonic open to kind of see what you're doing. I personally didn't like it, but in Zeon's defense, there is a little uh, screw cap opening on the left side of the gimbal where you could potentially mount uh, a kind of a screen on your mobile phone yeah, and connect it directly to your camera. You could potentially do that, but I haven't tested that out. So that is the, the first part. The app is great, but it doesn't always, from a control point of view, so how to control your gimbal, that's point number one. Point number two is balancing. You can balance the G7 relatively easily, but it is fully on the Y axis. It is fully to the max. Yeah, so you really have like, I think half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch left to, to, to kind of maneuver about. So it's really stretched already, which gives a, you know, to stabilize. Yeah, you stabilize it, but the engine still has to compensate for it. So on the vertical, axis you don't have much room on the sorry horizontal vertical horizontal axis you don't have much room on the vertical axis you have no room whatsoever you really have to drag it down and then still it tilts a bit forward but the engine can compensate then you have the so-called press release plate where everybody's so ooh, press release plate well fantastic but it's also stretched to the max so what you really see is that from a weight point of view yeah, your uh, G7 is about 500 grams. Lenses are between 150, 300 grams. It should potentially support it, and it does. So once you put it into PF 
or uh, into follow mode, whatever. It does what it does. But there's a price there. There's a lot of error uh, messages that suddenly it starts beeping and you see your camera flipping like all of this. It really doesn't help. And it gets frustrated when you really frustrating when you really want to 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 kind of shoot. Now I'm the self-proclaimed worst cinema uh, filmer in the world. Yeah, so the camera doesn't have image stabilization, doesn't really help. But in this case, if you really put a smooth shot and you're not even moving and you really see that the axes are balanced, but even when you put the engine up in times of in terms of torque or force, it still is very shocky kind of material. I was like, ah, do I really want to have that frustration every time that you're getting excited, you're walking outside and meep, 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 There you hear that dreaded sound of error again. So all of that combined, the balancing is on its max. The app, well, it's pretty good. I wouldn't say that is a negative, but in general is I can't mount uh, my LX DMC 100 or the GH4 on it. Yeah. <laughs> that becomes kind of cringing because when you use your mobile phone, and this is the positive side, when you use your mobile phone, and I think that's what it also was designed for, the connectivity, everything, it is fantastic, it is simple, it is good. So if you have a flagship phone and you want to have some additional uh, things on there, you can really use it. And I would definitely recommend it. It's probably better than the Smooth Q4. But if you're like me, somebody who has gh4 or you have a gh5 or a g7 or a g9 or a gx80 you really have to look at that compatibility list and it's a risk additionally some people have said yeah you can balance it out by uh putting some weights somewhere on the crane m2 well i haven't gone that route because if you have to balance it out that basically means that either your camera is too heavy or the machine simply doesn't support it so don't do that yeah just really go into your research. I've now ordered the uh, WeBuild Lab, which has up to three kilos. Uh, it's originally built for the GH5 and some of the Sony cameras, so really from a cinematic point of view. And I can't wait to, to, to really get that baby in and really start working with that. Although I'm the worst uh, filmer there is, practice makes perfect, right? Now, I also have a few other toys. First of all, I have the Mavic Mini, which is awesome. I've already tested it a few times indoors. It really is easy to control, but I'm a first time uh, drone pilot. So, well, it's not a drone pilot. I'm the first time standing like this. So I've also tested its robustness and it really can smack into walls without any, any problems. Yeah, and of course I just have the uh, GH4 secondhand. I just bought it and to be very honest, my lenses and the crop factors are something else. It, it really is, is amazing. I can use the 45, uh, fantastically, but the 14, which I normally use on the Lumix G7, suddenly has a completely <laughs> different wide angle. It's quite interesting. I'm looking into that, what to do with it. So in the future, expect a bit more of the Rebuild Lab, uh, of the Mavic Mini, and of the GH4, whether or not it's still a good camera for people like me. And I'm guessing I know the answer already. So anyways, if you want to keep up to date, Push the subscribe me button on my pretty face, which is now over there with the beard. I think I have to grow it because over here I look like a fat blob. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching and keep those questions coming. Thanks very much and see you next time. Bye bye.